Hello and welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson, your host. As the old saying goes, spring has sprung here in Durham. And with spring comes a ton of fun and exciting things that should definitely be on your to-do list. Joining me to talk about what's coming up and why you don't want to miss any of it are Annette Smith and Rakea Womack with Durham Parks and Recreation. Welcome Annette and Rakea. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Rakea, let's get started with you. Spring and summer promises to be um, a really good time for people who enjoy festivals in Durham. One festival that's coming up is the Bimbe Cultural Arts Festival. Tell our viewers a little bit about this very popular festival in Durham. Well, the Bimbe Festival started 43 years ago here in Durham, and it is a result out of an age-old tradition of the West African culture, where mm -hmm. they would get together and celebrate the harvest. So they would get together after the harvest and bring in everyone and have a lot of dancing and music and just celebrate the harvest for the year. Mm -hmm. So that tradition ha is a result of the Bimbe Festival. Uh -huh. Can you tell us who some of the uh, headliners are? Yes, well we're really excited about our headliner, Dougie Fresh, who is a hip-hop legend from the 80s who inspired the new dance, the Dougie, that a lot of young kids do today. Brought to you by Cricket, our presenting sponsor. Uh huh. So tell me more about it. I mean, uh, why is it so popular? Well, it's been around a long time. Most uh -huh. of the people who have lived in Durham, grown up in Durham, have come to Bimbe since they were little kids. So it's a really family-friendly atmosphere that people have gotten used to, and they meet people. They ha It's like a family reunion where they get together with old friends and family mm -hmm. and just have a good time. Okay, and when is it? It's May 19th uh -huh. um, from 12 to 8, and it'll be downtown at the TCB Plaza. We'll have a lot of the streets closed off mm -hmm. for various activities. We have a kid zone where there'll be a game truck where kids can play video games. There'll be Home Depot will be there doing different things. There'll be bounce houses and just tons of activities as well as music, vendors, all that good stuff. So we have tons of things going on. Okay, that sounds good. And I do know that you have another series too, and it's new very new, called Rock the Park. Yes. Tell us about that. That Rock sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, Rock the Park is new, but it comes from something old that we used to do, which mm -hmm. is the Summer Music Festival series that we used to host every summer in the various parks. We would have concerts, and due to budget, that was cut, and we had a lot of response of people who really wanted to come back, and we were able to figure it out and make a piece of it come back this year with the little twist. So Rock the Park is going to be a series of six different events. There'll be three concerts and three movies in the park. There'll be a family night movie, a kid friendly movie, and a date night movie. Okay. So something for everybody uh -huh. and the details of which movies we'll be showing will be on our website as well as the music. We'll have jazz, reggae, oh. old school, so it'll be a really a lot of fun to bring the kids and the whole family to participate. Sounds like a lot of fun. I know the other big event that you all have that's really popular and award-winning is the Warehouse Blues concert. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yes, Warehouse Blues did win an award as well as the Bimbe. We've won quite a few awards for some of our festivals, which we're very proud of, but mm -hmm. Warehouse in particular, this one has been going on for several years, and it's strictly for the blues, the blues lovers. Mm -hmm. um, we only have blues music, and it'll be each Friday in Durham Central Park in the evenings, and that's sponsored by Capital Broadcasting and Durham Central Park to help put that on, mm -hmm. because that as well was being faced with budget cuts, but mm -hmm. thank you to those organizations who have stepped up and really made us be able to continue the series, and we're really excited about it, because we have Bobby Hinton, who is a local person from Durham, who mm -hmm. lives here, who will be performing as well as national artists such as Cool John Ferguson okay. so we're really excited about that it. sounds great one more thing and I know I personally always look forward to this and that's 4th of July yeah are we doing it again this year absolutely we couldn't have a city without 4th of July and doing something to celebrate that because it's so important to the city and to the country mm -hmm. but yes July 4th will be on July 4th again okay. and because <laughs> some people celebrate it on the actual holiday that you have oh, off okay. but we actually celebrate on July 4th uh -huh. and it will be at the Durham Bulls Stadium as it has been in the past and details will be coming about that soon. Okay now Annette let's turn to you now. Right. Uh, we can't forget everything that actually goes on at our lakes and our parks every year. Give us a, a preview of what's coming up there. Well, our spray grounds will be opening in May mm -hmm. 
and those are located at East End, Forest Hills, and Hillside Parks, as well as at Edison Johnson Recreation Center. I also encourage folks to go and join in the fun at our two newest playgrounds. We have a new playground at Walltown Park uh -huh. and a new playground at Old Chapel Hill Park that we've constructed in the last few months. Okay. And finally, our lakes, Lake Mickey and Little River Lake, uh -huh. have both been open for recreational boating and fishing. And those hours are 6 to 6, Thursday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, what would we do without our lakes and parks? I mean, it's uh, something we can always count on every absolutely. summer to provide uh, great activities for us. And Annette, we can't forget about the adventure programs, especially now that the weather's warmed up. I know that there's some great things to do out at our parks. Absolutely. Uh -huh. DPR's Adventure Programs Unit is six years old this year. Oh. This unit offers really unique programming in outdoor and environmental education, mm -hmm. things like canoe and kayaking lessons, um, as well as they offer programs for groups at our high ropes course and at our low ropes course. Mm -hmm. A very popular program in the community right now are our Discovery Days, which happen on average about every other month mm -hmm. at the High Ropes course at Bethesda Park. They will be happening in the next few months on Saturday, May 12th and Saturday, July 21st. Okay. This is a program that requires pre-registration and it does fill up very quickly, but it gives anyone in the community who wants to the opportunity to try that great course out at Bethesda Park. All right, sounds like fun. One other great program that I wanted to tell folks about was uh, we have a new children's program called Kids on the Water. This is offering youth ages 9 to 13 the opportunity to try out a whole variety of different types of boating activities, canoes, kayaks, paddle boards, even sailboats oh. on Lake Mickey. And that's going to be coming up in July, and it will require pre-registration as well. Okay, all right. Sounds like we have a lot of cool things to do this summer, huh? I definitely have to get my to-do list out and start working on it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break right now, but coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk about how you can help Durham Parks and Recreation win big bucks to renovate Elmira Park. It's easier and tastier than you might think. We'll be right back. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Packers. Viking. Red state. Blue state. Vegan. Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown. Downtown. Optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty. Half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Welcome back to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson, your host. Now that we've gotten all the details on some fun activities that you can do this summer, here's an opportunity for you to help renovate one of Durham City Parks with just a click of the mouse. Joining me again to give us details on how we can sip our way to a better park are Annette Smith and Rukia Womack. All right, so let's talk about this fun project, it sounds like. Annette, I know that the city is competing to fix up one of its parks. Tell us about that park and why it was selected. Okay, we are very excited about the Sprite Sparks Park grant program. Mm -hmm. Elmira Park, which is located at 540 Elmira Avenue, uh, was selected. It is one out of 25 nationally selected basketball facilities for renovation. Uh -huh. Now all 25 parks qualify for a minimum of $5,000 that can go for renovation. Mm -hmm. However, through the public comment process or public involvement process, these parks can get up to $15,000, which in Elmira Avenue's case would provide funds for both resurfacing the court as well as new goal mechanisms. Uh-huh, okay. So Annette, what can our viewers do to help Durham win the most? Our viewers can help us by getting the most money for our Elmira Parks renovations by checking into the website on a daily basis and voting for Elmira Park. Mm -hmm. The more votes we get, 
the closer we get to that fifteen thousand dollar grant ok all right well you know something you guys have a lot of great things going on is there anything else you'd like to tell us about before we say goodbye we have beautiful parks ok sixty eight of them all right this has been a really great show and thanks so much for teaching us how to play more in Durham that's what parks and rec is all about now I gotta go and buy some Sprite. I gotta remember to do that. Yes, right? yes you do. All right. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Coming up next, we're going to go behind the scenes with Derma One Call and learn just what this one-stop resource is all about and how you can easily reach some helpful folks to get things fixed in your neighborhood. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson, your host. A one-stop shop for just about every city provided service. That's what Durham One Call is all about. If you've never used the service before, you're in for a real treat. Joining me now to talk about all the different ways residents can use the service and how it makes city government more accountable to our taxpayers is Marcel Bronner. Welcome, Marcel, and thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Bev. You know, many of our viewers may not have ever heard of Durham One Call or even know what it's about. Uh, tell us a little bit about the service. Durham One Call is the place at City Hall that does all kinds of wonderful things for the residents. We have, we are a division of the city manager's office mm -hmm. and we have highly trained individuals that actually um, get involved with questions that come from our residents and help them resolve any concerns that they may have. It's our goal to work and to make sure that we are performing better and making the city accountable for the things that our residents are looking for and the things that they expect. Mm -hmm. So our representatives, they take this very seriously and they want to ensure that whatever the residents' needs are, they get resolved and they get resolved timely. Okay, so tell me what some of the common calls are all about. Well, we have a variety of things. You've often heard uh, Durham One Call does it all. Uh -huh. They like to say that, the mantra. But we actually, we are the interface for our partner departments. Um, we have NIS, Public Works. We have Solid Waste, the Department of Water Management. And we take calls on behalf of those organizations um, for our residents. Mm -hmm. So they may call in and say, what is the dollar amount of my water bill today? Mm -hmm. or I need to have water I need to have water service started because I'm brand new to the city. Mm -hmm. And it gives our reps the opportunity to actually talk with the resident and tell them some wonderful things about our our fine city of Durham. Uh -huh. uh, and we kind of go through, they call about their trash, they call about their recycling, they call about the potholes. Uh -huh. They call about anything everything. and everything. Uh -huh. So it is an exciting place to be because we have our finger on the pulse of what goes on in the city. Uh -huh. And our residents know that uh -huh. and they embrace that. That's great. I would imagine no two days are the same. No two days, no two hours, no two minutes. Uh -huh. No, not at all. And and our and I guess our interaction with the residents range anywhere from extremely delighted mm -hmm. to very anxious. Hmm. Anxious, there may be uh, a situation going on down the road. We get the calls. Um, last week we got a call, there was a water main break, so the pressure was low. We had a number of citizens to call in and they reported it and we made sure that the communication got out to other residents in that area. Uh -huh. So it really is important, the service that we provide, because we are a call center for the people. Uh -huh. And like so that. we support the people and do what the people need to have done. Great. Great, that is a great attitude to have. Now, when are call center representatives available and how do our viewers contact them? Well, our call center is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we start taking calls at 8 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and the last call we take at 6. Okay. So we are staffed throughout the entire time taking calls throughout the day. Uh -huh. And what is your number? 
And our number is <laughs> 919-560-1200. Okay. All right. Be sure our viewers have that, okay? Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so calling during one call isn't, the, though, the only way to get information or to find out uh, how to get questions answered about what's going on in city government, is it? No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. And with this age of technology and all of us being on all the time, 24-7, we in Durham One Call and the City of Durham have a tool available to our residents. They can go to our internet site, the City of Durham internet site, and they can access Durham One Call and they can click on our logo and submit a request mm -hmm. any time of the day or night. Wow. Yeah, so we're excited about that because we do know that our residents are busy and they need to have access. So yes, that the online really service request. That sounds good and unique because I'll have to tell you, when I hear the word call center, I think about never-ending wait. Oh, it's going to take forever for me to get to somebody. Tell me, what are your call volumes like and how do you manage the whole process? Well, I am really fortunate to have a team of highly skilled individuals and our team is comprised of 11 people and from the 1st of July to now they've taken approximately 200,000 calls. Wow. And wow. it is. And the amazing part is our average hold time is about 44 seconds. So no resident is on hold for longer than 44 seconds on average and we have a target goal of about 60 seconds and so we overachieve that goal but we look to continue to improve it because we know when they call mm -hmm. we know when our residents call they have a concern they want us to resolve it immediately uh -huh. and that is our goal outstanding yeah outstanding. that sounds really good now i know you got some new things going on share that with our viewers ah uh, we are so excited about everything that's going on in one call we are in the process of opening our space and when we open our space, our workspace, for those who don't know, we're located at City Hall on the ground level. Mm -hmm. And when we open our space, it is our intent to give the residents, the city uh, employees, and people that we do business with the opportunity to be able to match a voice with a face. That translated, we're having an open house. Okay. <laughs> It's a party. Uh -huh. It's an open house. Come, meet, greet, see where we are. Get to know us so that we know who you are. And, and I can tell you, we do have some regulars. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, is that Mr. Smith? Uh, is that Mr. Donovan? Yes, that's Mr. Donovan. Uh -huh. So we are certain to ensure that we have that relationship because we know how important the service is mm -hmm. to the residents. I was going to say, it sounds like you've actually formed relationships with <sighs> residents, and that's, that's really good to yeah, hear. Yeah, we have. It mm -hmm. is pretty awesome. And then the other project that we have um, that we are working on is giving our, giving our residents access um, via their smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we're working with our technology solutions folks to provide an application that lets, that, lets our, our residents access the information on the site. So they can do it from their smartphone, smartphone anytime, anywhere, and then get the response the same way. So that's something that we're working on. So there's more to come on that. Okay, we've more wait with bated breath. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Marcel, I do understand that residents can also track their service request, fill out a satisfaction survey, or recommend an employee that can be um, recognized for excellent service. How can they do that through Durham One Call? Well, the way they can do that through Durham One Call is they can go to the City of Durham website mm -hmm. and they can click on One Call. And we ask our residents to do that because it's another way to enable or to allow Durham One Call to get better and better and better. The resident survey says, tell us what you like, tell us what you didn't like, tell us what we could do better. Tell us all about it. And if you did like something, share. Uh -huh. Please share. As far as um, other things that are there, a nomination form, it gives the city of Durham the opportunity to know that you enjoyed that experience, mm -hmm. that it was pleasant and it went well for you. Mm -hmm. So we do encourage our residents to take the online survey because it provides us with more information to get better because that is our objective. So feedback is important to you? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. it is. All right. Uh, Marcel, is there anything else we should know? 
Uh, one other thing I will share okay. is that the representatives in Durham One Call this year have been attending the PAC meetings, and we actually attended COP, uh, COP meeting. And what I'd like to share with all the residents is if there is a civic organization or a community group that you would like a representative from Durham One Call to come out and to speak about what Durham One Call does and what the advantages are, just call 919-560-1200. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. Yeah. It sounds like Durham One Call is a place where we do it all. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> Marcel, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that does it for this edition of City Life. If you have a comment or a future show idea, email us or call us. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like DTV8 on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can also watch all of our shows on demand from the city's DTV8 website and on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about city life in Durham.